Oh, hey there. I didn't see you. Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today I am coming to you in all of my nerdy, geeky splendor here to do the Animal Crossing tag. As you can see, I may or may not be just a little bit obsessed with Animal Crossing. So let's put the DS away and get to talking about the books. So this tag was originally created by Bookish Things and T. I will leave a link to her blog down below in the description box if you'd like to check out the original tag or perhaps uh, lift the questions so that you can do it yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. I wrote these down in my trusty notebook with my little Animal Crossing stickers here. Let's see, the first thing is Animal Crossing GameCube, a classic that you want to read. The classic that I want to read is Graveyard Clay. Its original title is Cranekeel. That is um, the Irish language and it is by Merton O'Caden. This is apparently like the classic of Irish literature that has rarely been translated into English, mostly because it is widely determined to be one of the more difficult books to translate successfully into English. I know this goes by a few different English titles, but the copy that I have is Graveyard Clay but you can also search Cranny Keel, and I'm gonna put that in the description box if you're looking for the specific spelling. Number two, Animal Crossing Wild World, favorite second book in a series. This of course has to go to Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo in which my dearest darling Matthias Helvar comes into his own as my comes into his own as my sweet little snowman. This is the second book of the Six of Crows duology, so I guess technically it's not a series, but because it's two books in serial form, we're gonna go ahead and count it anyway. But make sure that you read the first one before you read the second. Next up is Animal Crossing City Folk, favorite book set in a large city. It goes to Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Coincidentally, this happens to be my favorite book that Austen has ever written. It was also the first chronologically, but the final one published. It wasn't actually published until after her death. Her publisher purchased the manuscript from her when she was pretty young, put it in a drawer and forgot about it, and it wasn't until her brother basically like paid the ransom to get it back since publishing worked kind of differently back then that she was actually able to reclaim ownership of the manuscript which was then published by said brother after Jane's death. Um, this book takes place in the city of Bath. It is a resort city in England and is a fashionable sort of health spa curative type place during the time that this book takes place. But it is also kind of a city where young people would come to meet and mingle, show off the latest fashions and perhaps some indiscretions or two may arise. Okay, next up is Animal Crossing New Leaf, best new release you've read recently. This goes to You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a novel about twin sisters Tova and Adina who are going to be taking a test for Huntington's disease. It is a genetic disease that their mother has, meaning there is a 50% chance of each twin inheriting the disease. Tova is a sort of book smart, classic nerdy girl who does all the right AP classes and extracurriculars and wants nothing more than to get into Johns Hopkins and become a surgeon. And Adina is a viola prodigy. She really wants to get into a conservatory, um, devote her life to her music. So this book explores the relationship between the two sisters, both in the face of learning about this genetic legacy of their family and also just how they are as individuals. This was really sad, but also really sweet and very touching. Next up is Isabel, a book that's been with you through thick and thin. And may I just stop for a second and say, first of all, Isabel is what makes Animal Crossing worth playing. Tom Nook can go burn with his leaf tickets in hell, okay? Yeah, I said it. Isabel book for me is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is my favorite book of all time ever since I first read it when I was 13 years old. It is the story of Jane, a young orphan who is abused, forgotten, and misunderstood by her family and most everyone in her life. She takes a position as a governess at an old crumbling manor known as Thornfield Hall, which has an enigmatic owner 
and she begins to investigate various secrets of the house and mysteries that she finds there. This is a gothic novel with a surprisingly good, I guess not surprising because it's Charlotte Bronte, but surprisingly good compared to other gothic novels. Characterization, especially of women, Jane is one of the most fully fleshed out, like psychologically fleshed out characters I have ever read. Whenever I find myself in a tight spot, I try to think of what, whoop. whenever I find myself in a tight spot, I try to think of what would Jane do in this book is my go-to forever. Next up is Bells, a book that's rich with character. And that goes to The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I don't really want to say too, too much, but the main character of this novel is one of the most unique voices I have ever read. That includes fantasy, that includes any genre other than fantasy, and even the minor characters Pat Rothfuss pays so much attention to the teeny little details of their personalities. There's not a single character in this book that you don't just remember. You can see like the dirt underneath their fingernails is how well he writes them. These next couple ones I don't have with me. We start out with Pitfall, a book you wouldn't mind never seeing again. All right, booktube, don't hate me, but this one goes to The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I could not get into this book. I really wanted to like it. I really wanted to like this sort of Victorian story about a magical circus and dueling magicians, but it just, uh, it didn't really gel for me. And I don't know. Yeah, wouldn't really mind if I didn't have to see that one again. And then lastly is Fossil. Coincidentally, my favorite thing about the Animal Crossing game, Searching for Fossils. Favorite history slash historical fiction book, and that goes to The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, another book that's been with me through thick and through thin. It is a massive tome. I don't have it with me anymore, sadly. I believe I sold my copy in the Great Seattle Moving Book Purge, but Pillars of the Earth is a fantastic sort of epic historical fiction about the town of Kingsbridge in medieval England and the various characters that live in and around the town centered around building a great Gothic cathedral. So that is it for the Animal Crossing tag. Comment down below and let me know what you think of the books. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos. I will see you in the next one. Bye!